Welcome. We are so excited to be celebrating Dimeric Academy's 20th anniversary. It's a milestone that we are very proud of, and it's a wonderful time for celebration and reflection. Over the last two decades, thousands of people have contributed to our mission, adding to it and making it more impactful. Yet Demeriac Academy began with a simple dream that led to conversations and collaboration that led to deep commitment and a lot of hard work. Tonight, we have the honor of hearing from six people who were instrumental in the founding and early growth of Demeriac Academy. My name is Teresa Flynn Houghton, and I serve as president of Demeriac Academy. It is my honor to welcome Sister Joyce Weller, Brother Chris Brady, Lou and Suzanne Gerardo, Catherine Ronan Carrolls, Mike Daniels. Sister Joyce, please kick us off and share your role at, at Demeriac in the early years. My name is Sister Joyce Weller. I'm a daughter of charity. And my role at the time that Demeriac was first envisioned was I was working in provincial leadership and was asked by the Christian brothers to consider uh, playing a role in a dream that was just taking root. My name is Brother Christopher Brady. Um, I am a member of the De La Salle Christian Brothers. And a few nights ago in 1998, I was at that time the principal of Sacred Heart Cathedral Preparatory in San Francisco. And during a school exercise, a strategic planning session in Burlingame, the idea and the vision for a new work in San Francisco began to become known to others. Um, and at that point, I pride myself in having provided the location and the occasion for that dream to take root. I'm Lou Gerardo, um, a local San Franciscan who was at that meeting at uh, Mercy Burlingame where the daughters and brothers were talking. I guess it was primarily the brothers at that time talking about mission and the future. I'm Suzanne Gerardo, and I also was part of the beginning uh, of the, the school as looking not only at uh, founding the school in the Tenderloin that um, at that time and currently has the largest population of children if any neighborhood in San Francisco with, and these children did not have access to a school in the neighborhood. It was our vision uh, that all children would have access um, to a quality education, as well as wraparound services to continue to support their um, educational journey. Good evening. My name is Catherine Ronan Carrolls, and at the time that the vision for Demeriac came underway, I was working at Sacred Heart Cathedral. I was very fortunate to be hired by the Christian Brothers and the Daughters of Charity to become the first president and principal. Good evening, I'm Mike Daniels. I had the privilege of following Catherine as the second president of Demeriac and I spent 10 years of my life uh, serving uh, the school and it was the best decade of my life. Um, I'll start with you, Sister Joyce. Uh, why has LaSallian Vincentian education so effective in serving today's youth? I think that history has taught us that children grow and respond best in an environment of care and attention. And I think that both of our traditions uh, started with the belief of children being children of God, made in the image and likeness of a loving father who wanted their, his children to grow up uh, in a way that would empower them and engage them in life. And I think that tradition has continued in with both of our founders, uh, believing that and passing that on to us, the, uh, the uh, daughters and the, the brothers who continue in this valuable uh, educational model that we see at Demeriac. It's a model that respects each person as an individual. And uh, I think that's what makes it successful and will continue to make it successful. So I'll move over to Lou and Suzanne. First to you, Lou. Uh, you and Suzanne have been involved with Demeriac from day one. What got you involved in this work and what continues to motivate you to stay connected to Demeriac? What got us involved in this work 
was the response and commitment of the brothers and the daughters to the children and their families. The unbelievable commitment that they have, they call their charism, uh, I call it who they are, unbelievable strength. And we experienced it as parents at Cathedral, Sacred Heart Cathedral. And I was so delighted to know that the children of the Tenderloin would experience the same incredible education that two of our children got through the brothers and the daughters. And Catherine, Suzanne, many recognized that we weren't just opening a school, but we were developing a family. And I think that was the beauty and is the beauty of, 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 of DMA today and yesterday. Thank you, Lou. Um, and now Suzanne, uh, as you know, providing a holistic education is a hallmark of Demeric Academy. Can you talk a little bit about your experience um, develop, working with Demeriac staff to develop our academic resource program uh, and also our counseling program? From day one, uh, we realized in conversation with, uh, with Catherine Ronan Carrolls that academics was only one part of uh, the education that was needed um, to make the children successful. So uh, we put together a wraparound service program that included uh, a large counseling program, educational support um, with an educational therapist, speech and language um, pathologist that would be working with the children. And it was within these wraparound services that we felt would help the development of the whole child. Uh, Catherine, as founding president and principal, you experienced many ups and downs at DMA. Was there ever a moment when you were wondering, will we actually make it? And how did you and the DMA team uh, get over that, that challenge? There were so many challenges as we were beginning this program, and especially in the very early days, there was so much to do from hiring teachers to finding the families and students, selecting curriculum and uh, choosing the path forward for our counseling program, as Suzanne has described. But one day, um, we were the one of the big projects was that we had to build, construct the building. So Demeriac Academy is located in a building that is a former school operated by the St. Boniface Parish, which it's attached to. And we had to do a $2 million retrofit uh, construction project on the building prior to moving in. Father Louis Vitale was the pastor of St. Boniface at the time that we were beginning. And one day in the early spring of 2001, he called me in my office at Sacred Heart Cathedral and he said, did you hear about the fire? And of course I hadn't heard about the fire, but there had been a fire um, created by the construction and the fourth floor and the roof um, had significant damage. So it delayed the project by quite a bit, which meant that we were searching for a home to open in September. Fortunately, the leadership team and especially John Scudder at Sacred Heart Cathedral Preparatory said that we could open our school on their campus and the entire faculty and staff of Sacred Heart Cathedral Prep made that transition in our beginning incredibly um, successful. So one of the blessings of this unexpected circumstance is that the partnership with Sacred Heart Cathedral and Demeriac Academy started from day one. Now you, Mike, um, while you were president, you saw the growth of the graduate support program. Uh, the graduate support program walks with students as they enter new uh, transitions in their educational pathway. Can you talk a little bit about your experience as an educator and how you've seen the impact of that continued support? It really is an intrinsic component of the experience for students and families. Um, as you referenced, Teresa, we provide extensive support, especially during some real key transition moments like high school, college, and starting careers. And this is a 15-year commitment that I don't believe is matched by any other educational institution. Just last week, I wrote a reference letter for one of our graduates, Crystal, from the class of 2008. When we Zoomed last month to catch up, 
I asked about her parents, and I learned that her brother, Danny, another Demariac alum, uh, recently graduated from the University of San Francisco. Uh, Crystal is completing a graduate degree as a LaSallean Fellow at St. Mary's College. And of course, I am thrilled to be a resource and support to her. And this is what our graduate support program is all about, accompanying, supporting, and advising, and just being there as caring adults and support for our young people as they grow into the leaders we know they can be. So uh, to brother Chris, Suzanne, and Mike, um, as you know, we've had a very challenging year this year with the global pandemic and then also our national awakening of racial uh, injustice. What have you learned this year that can strengthen the Demariac Academy mission? COVID has been a real challenge for all of us, but together we have continued to provide a quality education at Demariac Academy. Um, not many schools can say that. So I'm hopeful that coming out of this, we realize how strong our partnership together is and the difference that we continue to make in the lives of our students and our families for the good. This has been a very challenging year uh, for the children and families of uh, Demariac, where um, I will also second uh, Brother Chris's uh, statement of hope. I saw this year that uh, Demariac's staff, uh, the community uh, partners, all really came together to support the children and the families, both academically through the counseling program, as well as um, if there were financial needs for the, the families. Um, and to me, it was what Demariac is really all about. It is a community, it's a family, it's support, and it's hope that next year will be even better. Um, and then now you, Mike, what have you learned this year that will strengthen our mission? Well, some key takeaways for me are around the importance of community and connectedness, which are really the hallmarks of DMA. Uh, as a society, I think we've raised our awareness around the basic right that every child should enjoy to a quality education. And so in light of that, you know, it's my opinion that the Marriott Academy has never been more essential more relevant and necessary as it is today for our San Francisco community. I'd also um, recognize that every child deserves to be known and valued and loved. And in partnership with families, I believe our Demariac educators do this among the best. What are your hopes for DMA 20 years from now? Catherine, why don't you kick us off? So I recently learned that Bianca Rojo Jaime, who is a member of the first graduating class of Demariac, is now on the board of trustees. And when I heard that news, my heart leapt uh, because we have always had the dream that our alums and their families would continue to be true leaders in the community. Part of the vision from the very start and, and one of the reasons for the school's success from day one has been rooted in the partnership between families and the school. So over the years, we've seen alums come back as volunteers, and then we've seen alums come back as employees. And now to see an alum on the board of trustees is just um, a wonderful statement about how that leadership is going to continue to deepen and grow over time. I think my hopes for Demariac are the same hopes I had 20 years ago. And that is that every single child that passes through the doorway becomes visible, remains visible, and stays connected to us. So my dream is, and I hear it today in all of these wonderful people, that we speak the name of the children who go through Demariac and through the doors of their high schools and colleges and onto their careers and maybe re-enter our doors to become part of Demariac again, but that we never stop speaking the name, that all children become visible, 
their families become visible, and that we remember them. In 20 years, we will remember them. And for 20 years beyond that, and 20 years beyond that. That the children of Demeriac and of the surrounding neighborhoods are the focus of Demeriac, that we do not become advocates for anybody but those children, and that that is our responsibility and all of the teachers that have shown such commitment and such love over the years. The buildings around us may change. The mores of San Francisco may change. The politicians may come and go, but the basic truth of this education that these children receive should not change because it is the real truth. Thank you, Lou, for that inspiring vision of Demeriac's future. And with that, I'd like to thank all of our panelists for their significant contributions to Demeriac's story. And thank you for your reflections on our past, present, and future. I can only imagine where the next two decades will take us. I'd also like to give a shout out to our students, our graduates, our families, our faculty and staff, former and current, near and far. You are DMA. I'd like to also give a special shout out to tonight's speakers, artists, and poets. Thank you for sharing your inspirations uh, with us. And finally, to you, our viewer, thank you so much for being with us tonight. And thank you also for your generous continued support of Demeric Academy. With that, I hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much. <laughs>